Hey everyone, welcome to the next episode in the Pi Game tutorial. Uh, in this one, we're going to get a second enemy type to show on the screen. And this one's going to be a bit different than um, the standard enemy that just comes down. This one will have actual uh, states that it can be in. So I'm going to do something simple. Uh, as you can see, I got an image here. It's the same as our player. Uh, it's just colored red and facing down because it's going to be coming from the top. But this enemy will have different states it can be in, and one of the states will be it'll just fly down, and once it gets to a certain section on the screen, it'll stop and just scroll left and right, bouncing off the wall while it shoots bullets down at the player. Uh, just something simple like that. Um, so, uh, the first thing I want to do, this is all of our enemy code for the first enemy type that we had. I'm going to copy all that, because it's going to have all the same stuff, but we're going to add some more stuff to it. Um, and just to note, a better way to do this would to be um, would to make it, you'd want to make like a base enemy class and then have a bunch of enemies inherit from it. But I'm not doing that in this tutorial. We'll do that in the more advanced tutorial because uh, again, I'm kind of just doing this one on the fly. But uh, we'll have a better way of doing this in the uh, the next Pi Game tutorial I do. So I'm gonna make a new. Uh, I'm just gonna call it enemy underscore two and paste all that enemy code in here and I'm gonna change it to enemy 2 right there and there and then I named the image enemy 2.png so for the image I'm just gonna do enemy 2.png uh, some things that this enemy will have it's gonna have a bullet list just like the player had or a bullet group because it'll be able to shoot as well. So we'll need, I'll just call it self.bullets equals pygame.sprite.group. And then we need a timer. I want it to shoot like every six seconds. So I'll do self.bullet uh, timer max equals 60. And then the current value for bullet timer will, at the start will be self.bullet timer max. So it starts at 60. Um, now, uh, there's a million ways you can do this, and we'll. Uh, this is probably the most straightforward and easiest way to do it. Uh, it's not the best way to do it, but for this tutorial, it's the most easy to understand. So, I'm gonna make a dictionary called states, and you can do this with a list, but I, uh, I think just for me, it's easier to read using a dictionary. But it's gonna be a dictionary, and it's gonna contain all the possible states that this uh, enemy can have. So, and I just make them strings. So you can make a string called uh, fly down, and it's also just going to equal the string fly down. And then the next one will be attack. So he'll only have two states he can be in. There's the starting state where he flies down, then once he hits a certain point, he switches states to the attack state where he just hovers left and right, and he'll start attacking. Um, and we'll write the functions for the for fly down and attack down below. but. This is just a dictionary of all the possible states. You can have more than two, but this guy's only going to have two. And then I'm going to make another um, property called state. And this is like what is the current state he's in. And he's going to start. Uh, we'll access that dictionary. And he's going to start at the fly down state. And then we'll write in the update function, we'll write all the logic for how to handle the states. Um, so let's see if we need to edit anything else in here. Everything else in here can remain the same, but we're going to add some stuff to this update function. So right here, oh, there's one other thing we need to do. Um, I'm going to make a variable called self init state, and it's going to equal true. So what, what the init state variable is going to do is as soon as his state changes, a lot of objects that you have, it, like on the first frame that the state changes, uh, certain variables and attributes get set and then it'll it'll like continue the logic of that state every frame. But you there's certain things you only want to happen on the first frame of the state. So that's what this flag is for. As soon as the first frame passes on the state, uh, it'll get set to false until it changes states again. Then it'll get set back to true for the first frame and then get set back to false. Uh, that'll make sense when we type it down here in the update function. So I'm going to do if self.state equals fly down self dot state fly down we're gonna write this function uh, later uh, elif self dot state equals attack self dot state attack 
So what this is gonna do is if his current states fly down on the update function, it's gonna execute a block of code we called state fly down. Or if it's uh, if his state equals attack, it'll do the um, state attack method that we're gonna write. So let's go ahead and write those. So state fly down, and we'll just pass for right now, and then state attack. Now the first thing I want to do for these functions, we're going to uh, do an if statement to check if it's the uh, first frame of the state. We're going to check that init state variable. So if self dot init state. Uh, for right now, we're just going to set it to false. We'll write the logic for what it does in a second. Um, so each state will look like that. I know this is kind of confusing, but. Just think, if it's the first um, the first frame it goes through this state change, right here, where all this gibberish is, that's the code that is only gonna get, get executed on the first frame of the state. Because you don't want every frame of the state to constantly like set a bunch of variables that only need to be set once. Um, so, all right, so he's, uh, the state is fly down, so what happens when he flies down? Um, no variables really need to be set, but I'm going to leave that here just in case. Uh, so we'll go right below this if statement. And we'll do um, if self.rec.y is greater than equal to 200, uh, self.state equals, we'll do this. So if if he flies down to about 200 pixels, what he's gonna do, his state will all of a sudden change to the attack state. We're gonna access that state dictionary and change it to attack. And it'll also set the init state back to true since now we're changing states and then it can run its setup that goes in here and switch it back to false and start executing it, its code. Um, so it does have some stuff in the init state uh, section right here. It We first want to set its velocity uh, y to zero. So self.velocity y equals zero. And um, I think that's really it for that. And then below here we'll do um, the code for making him hover left and right. So we'll do well, actually, we'll do this. On the init state, his y equals zero, but we'll also do self.velocity x equals random dot rand range between negative four and four. So as soon as he gets to um, 200 pixels down, he'll start moving either left or right. But there's a problem with this. He might actually get a random integer of zero and we don't want that, so let's do, um, we'll do if self, or sorry, if velocity x equals, um, oh, if self dot velocity x equals zero, or actually we'll do a while loop, that way it'll keep doing it, while self dot velocity x equals zero, yeah, there we go. Um, this isn't the best way to do this, but uh, it will. I mean, it's, it's going to work, and you're not going to see any issues. But it's going to get here, and as long as his velocity x equals zero, it will keep generating a random number until it gets uh, an actual number other than zero. So he'll actually move. Um, it, it's perfectly fine for this game. You're not going to see any issues. But theoretically, it could just keep hitting zero, although the odds of that are so small. But if it did keep hitting zero, your game would freeze. But that's not going to happen. There's better ways we can come up with for this as well, but again, we're not gonna do those for right now. Um, so that should work and we should start seeing him move. However, he will eventually go off screen. But let's go ahead and uh, kind of test some of this stuff out. Let's go to enemy spawner. And we imported the regular enemy, but let's do from enemy to import enemy to in our enemy spawner. And how do we want to spawn enemies? So. For spawn enemy, let's do this. Let's do random number equals random dot rand range between zero and one hundred. 
and we'll kind of gonna rewrite this but if the random number is I want I want the second enemy type to be a little bit more rare than the first type so we'll do if random number is less than or equal to 75 uh, new we can just move this up here I'll just cut that so there's a 75% chance that it's just gonna spawn a regular enemy uh, elif random number is greater than or equal to 76 we'll do new enemy equals enemy 2 there we go so it's gonna pick a uh, um, there's a 75% chance it'll generate the, the regular enemy that we have and a 25% chance between 76 and 100 that it'll get the second enemy type and spawn him so uh, let's see I probably typoed somewhere but we're gonna see if this works so yeah so it's working so he comes down and we're getting more of the other enemy types than the uh, bigger enemies Should see at least one more. There we go. Maybe he's a little fast on his uh, velocity X. Let's get enemy two or velocity Y. Uh, let's make it between like three and four, because that that one came down really fast. And I also want to see something real quick. I want to go to enemy spawner. I just want every time one comes down, I want to print that random number just to make sure everything's working okay. So 98, that would have generated one of them. 11, 7, 58, 30, 49, 14, 68. All right, 97 generated one of them. All right, uh, so the next thing we need to do is he's going off screen, so we got to get him to bounce back. And that's actually not that difficult. Um, on the update or actually the attack function because that's when he's moving um, we can do oh you know what we actually yeah yeah sorry so after the init state block which is right here uh, we'll do if self dot rec dot x is less than or equal to zero all we need to do is whatever his current velocity is, you can just uh, multiply it by negative one. So you can do self dot velocity x times equals negative one, and it just flips it. So if he's going, if he's going negative four pixels to the left and hits the side of the screen, if you multiply it by negative one, now he's going four pixels to the right. So he'll just bounce. And you can do the same thing for the other side. But remember, on the other side, we have to add his width. Otherwise, it's when he goes off screen, he'll come back. So self dot uh, rec.x plus self.rec.width if that's a greater than equal to our display width then we do the same thing velocity x times equals negative one so now that he should bounce there we go and this is going to be a minute he's going slow which is fine, but for testing purposes, it's, yeah, there you go. So now they're bouncing. All right, uh, so yeah, that's kind of how you, and you can give them as many states as you want, write the logic for at what points each state flips to another state. We'll probably put something in here that limits how many of them can be out at one time, um, maybe. Uh, I'll also, we'll, in the next video, we'll get them to actually shoot. They'll have a, sh a bullet timer, and they'll be able to shoot back at us. Um, so, yeah, see you guys in the next video.